welcome to Learning Graphic Design with Kyle. I'm Kyle Anderson, and you're watching Learning Graphic Design with Kyle. People are always coming up to me and asking me, Kyle, you're a graphic designer? Wow, that is so cool. What is kerning? So let's talk. Let's dive into the controversial world of kerning in a new segment that I like to call the summer of kerning. But before we get started, I'd like to thank our new sponsor, Siget. Uh, Siget Heating, Heaters and Cooling. When you're dealing with a frustrated client, things can get heated pretty quickly. And during these dog days of summer, it's easy to keep your cool with Siget's Heating and Cooling. Servicing the greater Columbus metropolitan area for nearly 30 years, Siget's gets the job done right. Visit us at our new location on Morse Road off of 270 just minutes from the airport. This year, choose Sigets. Um, again, I'd like to thank uh, Sigets for providing this fan here. It's, uh, it's been really nice to have. It's keeping everyone here in the studio nice and cool. I'm sure you're familiar with this logo. I'm also sure you're familiar with this logo. But what do they both have in common? Perfect kerning. Let's take a closer look. Imagine you're at a store, like a grocery store, and you're standing in line. Kerning is the space between you and the person in front of you and the person behind you. You don't want to get too close because they may have BO and you don't want to be too far away so that they don't cut in line. Get out of here. In other words, kerning refers to the amount of space between two letters. And welcome to demo time, where we actually show you how to adjust your kerning. So you select the type tool. Now you can select your text um, and you go up here to this box and now you can adjust the spacing between the letters. And like anything, kerning takes a lot of practice to develop a keen eye for typographic spacing. For example, thanks to practice, I'm pretty good at estimating microwave times. Well there you have it, that's the summer of kerning. And I'd like to end this episode with a new segment that I like to call, What's the Difference? Hey, hey Kyle, what's the difference? This week, you guys wanted to know the difference between a JPEG, a PNG, and a PDF. PNGs, or portable network graphics, have transparent backgrounds, also known as alpha channels. JPEGs do not. As a general rule of thumb, you should only use pure, uncompressed PNGs. No JPEGs allowed. And forget about PDFs. Get those stupid PDFs out of here. I recommend purchasing a firewall to protect your computer against PDFs. That's because PDFs can contain harmful malware. Not all PDFs contain malware, but some of them might. Therefore, we need to ban all PDFs. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why don't I just avoid all those shady websites that typically contain malware? Because at the end of the day, a PDF is not a pure, uncompressed PNG. And remember, if it's not a PNG, it's not right for me. 